So you're mixing vocals inside of Logic Pro 10, and you're not sure exactly which plugins to reach for to mix your vocals. I'm here to tell you exactly which ones you should reach for and how to use them. Hi, my name is Tyson. I'm a mastering engineer here at Dinosaur Dog Mastering, and we're going to be diving into mixing vocals today and my recommendation on a vocal mix chain that's going to work for every genre, ultimately give you awesome professional sounding results. But before I dive into that, I want to give to you something for free that's way better than just a vocal mix chain. It is my free course course called the Pro Mix Formula. You can get access to this. You can get the multi-tracks and actually mix along with me throughout the entire course. I explain every single step along the way and ultimately teach you the formula to a professional mix. If you want to get that, then make sure you're checking in the description or on the first comment down below. There should also be a link to get access to the Pro Mix Formula. With that said, let's dive straight into the content of the perfect vocal mix chain using stock plugins inside of Logic Pro 10. I'm just gonna take this vocal as an example here. The plugins I already have on it are just for tuning, so you can ignore those ones for now, but we're gonna be diving into actually how to process those initially. The first thing I wanna do is add some additional saturation to the vocal because it sounds a little digital. There was nothing, there's no analog equipment that this was recorded with, so I wanna add some just more vibe to it, if you will. And I'm gonna use the Vintage EQ collection from Logic Pro, and I'm gonna select the Graphic EQ. The reason I select this one is because it's the easiest one to use. And then I'm going to actually change the, the Graphic EQ to the Smooth Console EQ, and then I can actually change this drive to make it sound like it actually was recorded on a real console rather than digitally, and so more like you would expect from a professional record rather than something that was recorded in a bedroom. So here is the vocal. I'm going to just dial in this uh, output drive until I find that it sounds more more vibey, essentially. Take my crown, cause honestly, I'm not an honest me. Be the plane I travel on all my life. Okay, that sounds pretty good to me. The vocal does sound really dead. Pull up my multimeter here, and I'm going to take a look at where that muddiness might be coming from. And then we're gonna fix that with our EQ here. Take my crown, cause honestly, I'm not an honest me. Be the plane I travel on all my life. Yeah, so it looks like there's definitely a buildup around the uh, the 500 hertz or so. So I'm gonna take that down. That is also the fundamental setup. I wanna be a little bit careful doing that. And then maybe probably around the 250 as well. I'm gonna take that down at three decibels. Let's see how that does. Take my crown, cause honestly, I'm not an honest me. Okay, and then the top end is pretty weak too. So I'm gonna boost that. Let's just add two decibels there as well. Take my crown, cause honestly, I'm not an honest me, be the plane I travel on. Okay, so I think I'm almost there. The one last thing I really want to do is add some more mid-range to this so it's going to cut through the mix because we're getting pretty close, but if I unsolo this and listen to it in context, it's really not cutting through the mix very well. So I definitely need to add some sort of mid-range to allow it to cut through the mix a bit more. We're going to add a two decibels around the 2K range here. Okay, so that's getting really close in terms of the overall balance. The other thing I'm gonna do is add a compressor, and I'm adding this compressor before the EQ moves because I just like the, the vibe that it gives a little bit better. And I think it's a little bit more natural sounding with the compressor with all of those kind of muddy mid-range notes in there. Uh, more like the voice was actually recorded. So very minor. You don't need to follow that if you don't want to. You can easily add it after. It's not, not going to make that big of a difference. I'm going to use the Studio FET again because I'm trying to warm this up and give it some more analog vibes. And this 1176 emulation is going to add that to the vocals. So this Studio FET is a really nice compressor to be able to use for vocals. With that, let's dial this in. I'm going to use a 3 to 1 ratio, a relatively long attack. Uh, we're going to start at 50 milliseconds. And then I'm going to leave my release on the auto setting there. And then I'm gonna reduce this until I'm getting 
quite a bit of gain reduction, probably between five and six decibels. Round five or so is usually what's good for vocals. That's a lot more than I would normally do for other instruments, but vocals, it, you often need a lot of compression in order to control those dynamically. All right, so that's sounding pretty good to me. The last thing to do is add an, some de-essing because those S's are now starting to really come out and because of the additional compression that we've added. So let's biggerize that one. And my goal is to get around six decibels of reduction. So if you look at the reduction meter, my goal is to get around six decibels on those S's. So I'm gonna just set it right at six and see how that does. Maybe eh, let's bump it up to seven. And then we'll mess with this threshold until we're getting consistently down to that minus six mark or so. There we go, should be good. All right, and that is your vocal chain. Remember, adding some saturation by using a more vintage style EQ can really help bring that vocal to life, making the proper EQ changes to avoid muddiness and increase the vocal's clarity and then also its ability to cut through the mix. And then adding a compressor, getting around five decibels of gain reduction is probably about right for most genres and songs. If needed, add another compressor to be able to add even more compression. And then don't forget to DS if you have those S's really starting to poke out of the mix after you compress. If you want more training on how to get a professional mix, my Pro Mix Formula course is down below. It is free and you can get that in the description or on the first comment. There should also be a link to get access to that course. So don't forget to pick that up and I will see you on the inside there. And if not, then I'll see you in the next video.